Hi guys. Um, hi. <laughs> um, nice to be here. Um, myself and my colleagues has been coming for the past three years, so it's um, nice to be back. Um, so let's see. All right. So this again, hello CSS Um and everything is done in CSS 3D. Um, a, a bit of like a floating debris, if, I don't know if you like gravity or interstellar. All right. All right, so um, my talk today, uh, the outline, uh, will be talking about a little about 3JS, um, why this talk is about the CSS 3D renderer, and um, a bit of history, like, you know, what went behind the scenes um, as a developer and you know a bit of what goes under the hood in this renderer and a bit of you know what what's gonna happen next like are we gonna use this stuff like that. So 3.css uh, 3.css 3D renderer that's the convention that um, we use for the 3GS library. But first you were saying what? You know, why are we talking about a JS library like in a CSS conference? Um, and in fact, um, it's probably not, um, you know, when we talk about 3GS, many people, you know, there's a book which says like the JavaScript library um, for WebGL. I mean, you could look at it as it's only a WebGL a library, or you could think that, oh, it's the best JavaScript library for 3GS, you know. Um, hopefully it's uh, later. Um, and, and so, um, so one thing for thought is that um, great things doesn't belong alone. Um, it's called uh, Juice, which is the nickname my colleagues give me. Um, and maybe we'll go more into that, like why, you know, what good things doesn't have to be, you know, why doesn't we have to be alone, or why are things alone? So a bit of 3JS um, um, is a JavaScript library, um, and it's hosted on GitHub. Um, quite a number of contributors, and you can see quite a bit of following. And, and the guy behind that, uh, Ricardo, uh, otherwise known as Mr. Duke, is, uh, started this project. So a bit of 3JS, like, it's a rendering engine, and you, you use that to render a scene. So there's only four things that you need. First, it, it's a scene. Second, it's objects. Objects can be meshes, you know, 3D models, materials, light, a grouping of 3D objects. And the third is a camera, where since this is a virtual 3D scene, you want to, to have a camera to um, to capture like what the camera sees. And you have perspective and orthographic. Perspective is what is what your eye sees. Like as things it goes down, the houses goes down the road, you know, the, the, the houses appear smaller. Orthographic is like when you use it like for some orthographic drawings, like the same objects of the same size appear to be the same length when it's maybe on paper or on your screen. And lastly, it's renderer. And um, so, it's, so you can see that there's really, you know, not just WebGL renderer. There's a canvas renderer, WebGL, SVG software renderer. Um, I will not go so much into it, but the, the idea is that 3JS is a very modular um, JavaScript uh, rendering engine, where you could basically say that, um, you know, you have a scene, you have objects, you could use a perspective camera, camera or orthographic camera. And likewise, the renderer are uh, kind of like uh, modular, uh, you know, you could plug a canvas renderer for WebGL renderer. And um, canvas renderer has been more popular over the past years because WebGL has not been supported like um, on many platforms. But uh, like with iOS 8, we have mobile devices running WebGL. So in the new releases of 3GS, like WebGL is the default 3GS renderer. 
So um, this is how you do it in code. Okay, you have a scene, you know, you write new scene, um, camera, we have a new perspective camera, and renderer, we have new web VR renderer. And you add objects, fiber objects to the scene, and you call renderer.render with the scene and camera pass in. So the nice thing about the CSS 3D renderer is that it works like almost the way you would see for a WebGL scene. Except that instead of a new tree WebGL renderer, you would actually use like CSS 3D renderer. And you do the same, which is um, you include the tree JS library. Um, you include the CSS 3D renderer JavaScript file. Um, because it does not come with the default build, uh, but it's, it's, it's in the source, in, in the GitHub repository. And you create DOM elements, and you basically wrap them in 3D objects and 3D or 3D sprites. You add them to the scene, and then you could have animate them or add interactivity. So, um, so I mentioned, um, if you wrap them in 3D objects or 3D sprites. So basically, you could just create a DOM element and and basically the difference is that a 3D object kind of has a perspective like when you rotate it it feels that it's like a paper being um, rotated in a 3D space while a 3D sprite is like a view bar which faces you all the time that is the one in the middle All right, so, I mean, why would you use a CSS 3D renderer? Like, you know, you have WebGL is, is gaining um, popularity, you know, it runs on iOS, you know, no longer a problem. IE 11 runs uh, WebGL, so why CSS 3D? So, um, one of the benefits, which I, which I think is, is really great about this, is that it's really lightweight. Like, um, it, in fact, if you if you take all the things that um, the, just the, uh, to to render to if you package the library for with the CSS 3D render without WebGL or Canvas, it's probably before GZIP is around 80 KB, so it's very small. You know, it's uh, not not a concern. Right? Um, the, the the default um, I think the WebGL build is about 200 200 KB. So, um, what are the benefits? Like, if you are used, if you are a web developer and you, you are used to having DOM elements, so this is really great. Like, instead of using a WebGL, um, in a standard flow, you would have to create like three D models, like some form of uh, a geometry, and then you have to to create materials, say um, a basic material, you know, with a flat shading, or you could have uh, a a lumbered um, shading, so it, so you have to put lights in there and you know to calculate like uh, what kind of smooth shading or is it a flat shading that you need. But uh, for the C for CSS 3D renderer, it's just they yeah, are just animating DOM elements, so no shaders, no material, no meshes, which which really simple. And so the the things that you're animating is CS yeah, CSS. Server, which is uh, you could just style it in whatever ways you like. You like to put a curve radius border to it, you could do it. And when you have all these objects which are animating, you could actually add a DOM events handler. Like you could, you could add a mouse over, a mouse click. Um, while in a typical um, WebGL or canvas renderer, the browser renders to a canvas, which is basically and what you get is. Um, when you do a mouse move, you get kind of you get the coordinates, and you have to to ray pick to find back what object you, yeah actually the cursor is on. Um, it's mobile friendly. Um, it runs on quite many um, mobile devices, Android, iOS, um, and it's pretty performant. Um, so there, this year, um, John Brown. Um, he actually gave a talk at CSS Conf EU on his experience working using the CSS 3D renderer 
um, with for projects for Google. So like for, for example, the, the showcase a website of uh, google.com slash IO. So this is a recommended talk. And, and yeah, if you have time, you know, remember to check that out. <laughs> um, so a slice of history. Um, probably too small to read, but uh, I'll just go ahead to, to, to just explain. So, I mean, you, if you watch Iron Man, you will see, like, um, it's navigating some uh, user interfaces. And um, oops, sorry, bounce back. And and so, and so um, the story goes that um, famous uh, actually wrote a library to um, to be able to do like all of this rendered like on your iPad, and and so they. So there is the, the famous library for that, and, and Ricardo, or Mr. Duke, kind of like say, okay, you know, um, what is that? It's not they say it's not WebGL, it's not Canvas. So what what is that? Oh, it has to be CSS 3D, and and so uh, Mr. Duke did this experiment himself, and there you have it. And rotate it. So, all this is in CSS 3D. Um, all right. Um, yeah. I mean, this this is a screenshot of uh, you know of this on running on the iPad. So he would say, okay, well, great, but how does it work? And the thing behind this is 3D transforms, CSS 3D transforms. And let's, let me just do a quick demo. Um, so this is another example which comes in the 3.js uh, examples. In, and you can see this is basically rendering a panoramic uh, view in a, in a skybox. And if we, if, we take, if we inspect the element, you can see these are all DOM elements. It's basically an image. And if you, so let's, let's try this. It's too big. And you can see that the matrices are changing. So this is how the CSS 3D renderer works. Um, Maybe a bit too complex, and, and, and so I will do a, I'll try a bit of live coding. So, this is basically just a red diff in a really simple HTML file. There's just a head um, and a body, um, and that's a diff 200 pixels, 200 pixels. So, let's use the Form. And let's try skill. So, skill X. And you see that it changes. Um, maybe let's add a bit of fun. We'll just add transition. Um, yeah, not recommended to use all for performance reasons, but you know, for laziness, I will just do that. Um, is in. And if I play around this number, you can see that it moves. Okay, so now we um, let's try rotate, and we try rotate uh, say Z, and say five degrees, maybe a bit more for some effect. And okay, rotate Z works. And now let's try rotate Y. Or rotate X. 
Um, and, and it's kind of strange, like, nothing is happening. So, so why, why is this happening? So what you have to do is that you have to go to the parent element and add a perspective. I'll give it a number. And there you have it. It gets... And you see the, the, the matrices um, that you've seen before um, in, in, in the previous example. So you could, you could do like a matrix and then you have to four, five, six arguments. This is a shorthand for like a, more arguments for matrix 3D. And So this kind of controls the scale, and this controls like the translation. Um, yeah, metrics is kind of scary. Like um, you know, I, I did not like all of this mathematics um, until when I start playing with this, and it's actually not too difficult. Um, um, yeah, this is the documentation in MDN, like metrics, like what parameters to use. And if you'd like to learn more like, about matrices, um, S S Steven Vidian says um, has a good talk like uh, making bad job dance where he kind of like explains how matrices work. It's basically a matrix contain a rotation, a skill, and a translation in in a concise way. And this is what the CSS 3D renderer is doing. It applies it to the to the the DOM elements so that you don't have to do like skill X, skill Y, translate X, and that becomes really lengthy. So, what are the limitations? Like, why, um, you know, in what ways the CSS 3D renderer isn't that good? So, first, a browser bug. Um, this, this, this was brought up in um, John Brown's talk too, when IE does not support. Preserve 3D. So Preserve 3D is basically if you have a 3D object in a 3D object, and you basically you just have to it maintains like a coordinates in a child object, and and without that you you can't just add objects in the objects and re retain up the perspective. So there are solutions where it's a 3D renderer IE and uh, intersection problems like. Um, Chrome may not be able to render it when two Ds like intersect and may not kind of uh, shows the the depth properly. So next, um, rasterization. So what happens behind the scene is that uh, when you use this seed uh, transforms, is that um, it gets sent to the GPU. So GPU is uh, to simply say that it's a piece of hardware which does graphics and actually does it. Mm -hmm. It's much more efficient to do it on the hardware than to do it in software. And, and so this is an example I, I did like, um, to kind of like imitate metrics. Um, and oh, and oh, what I wanted to demonstrate is that if you zoom in, um, you can see that the, it's kind of pixelated. So this is rasterization. Like if you, it, it's not like in, in the, um, if, if you have a plane in BACGR and you zoom in, you could still see that there's a straight line. But over here, when you zoom in, like, you kind of see that it gets pixelated. But it's not, not really a big problem. Um, OK, let's just play around with this. Okay, let's go on. You can upscale it. So when you write a text, if you create a text um, element, you could kind of like size it up to maybe 100 pixels, and then you get crisp edges. <coughs> and the next thing is layer limits. So uh, I was basically ex experimenting, and and um, and and, and, and uh, we had so Mr. Duke had this experiment, which. Uh, which years ago used to run performant, and when I tried out like that, this is in 2012, 
and it was like rendering one frame per second. And, and so what possibly changed over the years is the way the browser renders um, the web page. And, and um, let's see. Let's take a and so th this was the experiment which I was playing with, which was kind of like a clone of this experiment. And when I turn on depth of view, it's basically I'm applying a CSS uh, blur filter to it. And have imitated that the, the back objects are kind of blurred up, like, like bouquet in, in photography. So, um, and so this was his original exper experiment. And, and what's interesting that this was um, done, it's not with CSS renderer, it was done in the DOM renderer. So when, when I kind of look at this experiment, I say, wow, you know, what is this? It's not, it's not CS, it's not Canvas, it's not WebGL, it's not CSS 3D renderer. So I, mean, I was starting to dig up the history of like how 3GS evolved, which was basically used to render DOM elements. And so um, some other tests I did which was like, I slowly add like a couple of hundred elements. And when you hit a thousand, you see the frames per second drop to about 10 frames per second. So what happens is that there's a limit to how many layers that you could, um, that you could actually animate with the CSS 3D renderer. But what happens is that every time you use a translate 3D, you know, the, the translate Z hack, you are creating a layer, and that layer uh, becomes, it's, it's supposed to be accelerated, and, and, and the, let's say the browser compositor will have to put them together. So, um, so Paul Lewis, who is a developer of OK for Google, has this article saying, bye bye layer hacks, like hello real chains. So although like, you know, we, we have found that the Translate Z is pretty good, like, you know, it makes things animate much faster. Uh, if you abuse this feature, you know, and you hit like a thousand objects with this, your web page is gonna slow down, like really badly. And he has a related article which says that actually making layers is considered dangerous. So, but as long as you know like what the limits are, I think um, it's, it's good to know like how the browser is rendering and, and so you will not, you know, uh, you know, just not like apply translate Z on everything and you know, you may just cause your browser to hang. So one question is, can CSS 3D render, uh, like render meshes, like, you know, like with the other renderers, 3Js? So this was another experiment which I did, basically turning a user object. You know, remember I said that, that the CSS 3D render doesn't use geometry. Um, but if you take a, the user geometry items, like in, in this case a sphere, um, I could kind of translate it back into, to be rendered with CSS 3D. So what happens is that every line here is basically just a DOM element. And now, this is an interesting article to stack us on Stack Overflow. And um, so Wes Lange, he's um, like one of the contributors, uh, he's very active in this 3JS community, like, you know, helping people. Um, and he's, he comes from a max background, you know, but he's, it's pretty interesting, like, you know, how different people, like me without a graphics background, we, you know, we come together and, and there's so many interesting things that come up from this 3GS ecosystem. So, um, we got tweeted up, I think this was this year, about pushing the limits. So this was his approach to, to render for rendering meshes. Oops. Render meshes. Think. 
good thing you are, you can always find things back with Google. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the, the classic flocking, the bird flocking system in 3GS, but it's all in CSS 3D. Kind of like. Yeah, all the little diffs all around the place. And performance. So not only you could render meshes, you could actually emulate the kind of lighting that you have in WebGL. And, and what, one of the more complex examples like <laughs> building with rendering is to the support animation. And we, we see that that is, well, it's, it's, it's also possible. All right. So, um, so this is another example of a CSS 3D render being used. Um, so this is a link to his blog where you could actually find that um, you could you have the editor and you could actually like create stuff like that. But apart from this, like um, trying to render meshes, we, we we see that it's hitting the limits. Like it runs like. You know, animated horse at like eight frames per second. So the question is: Is this the end of, you know, the CSS 3D renderer? So uh, my part of that is still practical. Like, you know, it's used in the, the Google I/O um, showcase. Um, there's other experiments which, uh, like, the following link shows like how you could use WebGL together with CSS 3D render because WebGL doesn't support like rendering text of the box. So you could actually basically just use text in uh, your DOM elements and, and because it maps perfectly like from WebGL to CSS, um, you could actually like, like kind of like create labels with that. Um, more demos, uh, although I think we might not have time for this. Um, little experiment for Christmas. Uh, not, uh, actually, I've added some, but you can imagine. Dun, 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 dun. So, okay, so I, I think I'll sum up, like, um, 3GS isn't just, you know, although it's really popular for WebGL, it isn't just for that. Um, and sometimes we don't have to think, like, you know, should we use this or use that? Is it better or not? Sometimes it could be complement, and ideas aren't restricted to platforms. Like, ideas in the VFX industry, you know, is what I, I would like to see in real-time graphics on the browsers. Um, or you know, ideas which uh, famous has could be used in 3GS. And, and the simplicity of this renderer, you know, kind of, it has a special place in me, although you know, these days I, you know, I, I, still, I love doing WebGL. And so um, I come to the end of my talk, thank you. Uh, that's uh, my Twitter handler. Wow, I always love the demos. Please, huge applause for that. Could you please elaborate on how the shading of the polygons work? Like, for example, the horse. Um, okay, so for that, um, it that uses a slightly different version of the CSS 3D renderer. That kind of like um, it does needs to cal calculate like its shading. So basically, you take the the face normals, and that is your classic uh, computer graphics kind of. Uh, um, algorithms like uh, you take the normal and the, the direction of the light, and you kind of like you do a dot vector. I mean, sorry, a dot, uh, a dot product, and you can find like, you know how much light, uh, you know how how bright you perceive that to be. So that is done in JavaScript, and then you kind of like just modify the color of the dot element.
Have you actually ever used 3D CSS in a normal website? Do you use that at Zopim somewhere? Um, no, we <laughs> don't. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I have. If you go to the JSConf website, it uses a lot of 3D translations. Uh, I try to make use of it somehow. I'm sure there will be more uses in the future uh, on how to use 3D CSS to actually give more personality to websites in normal websites. Like your everyday shopping website could use 3D CSS because all that stuff doesn't just works in your browser, right? So, thanks again. Applause for Joshua. I think that was really, really awesome. <laughs>